the field of surgery is constantly improving and new methods are coming to fore all the time, which brings with it its own challenges. The approach to the patient is now in many instances vastly different and therefore neuromonitoring actually adds a layer of safety. Intraoperative neuromonitoring is really intended to be used to prevent major neurological complications during various types of surgeries. When we say complication, we basically mean, in simple terms, maybe paralysis. The goal is to convey the information in real time to the surgical team. They can act on it and minimize the outcome of uh, major or catastrophic neurological uh, complications. The neurophysiologist, with the consent of the patient and the surgeon, they attach sensors to the patient to monitor the activities from the muscles, from the nerves, from the brain. All of them are analyzed in real time, interpreted by the neurophysiologist in the operating room, and confirmed by a remotely supervising physician such as a neurologist or other experienced physicians who specialize in this field and they report to the surgeons in real time. Based on what they hear, the surgeons and the anesthesiologists may act to optimize the results of that particular surgery. It gives us confidence that when we're finished with the surgery, uh, as long as there's been no change or even improvement in the neuromonitoring signals, uh, we know we've done the job that we came to do. Uh, there have certainly been instances where uh, there have been decreases in signals in one arm or one leg during the procedure and that allows us the opportunity at that time to explore that nerve uh, to make sure nothing's impinging on it. Data is out there where in unmonitored uh, patients who undergo major surgeries where the nervous system may be at risk, uh, the complication, major complication rate used to be as high as 5%. But by doing this procedure of intraoperative neuromonitoring, it reduces the major complication rate to 0.2%. Any element of security that I can add to the case uh, is of tremendous value to me and the patients. And specifically neuromonitoring as what I think is becoming the standard of care for many procedures it's something that for a lot of procedures I would never operate without. In this day and age where many operations are done with minimally invasive approaches, the field of intraoperative neuromonitoring really assists the surgeon not just in monitoring but also navigational aspect of where the surgeon intends to get to. I think that neuromonitoring should be a part of all certainly all major spinal operations, if not uh, all spinal operations in general. Uh, I know people around the country who operate uh, elsewhere, um, particularly in the South. I know somebody in South Carolina who doesn't use monitoring at all. And, and uh, to me, I don't think that's the standard of care. I think the standard of care is to provide the safest service available. And to me, that means neuromonitoring in the OR. I use it on every one of my complex scoliosis, reconstructive, and cervical spine cases. And I think it's absolutely mandatory uh, to do so.